My mascara is broken and so much mascara liquid comes out of it. It took me, I kid you not, at least 15 minutes to stop it looking like spiders were coming out of my eyeballs. Hi guys, I'm Chloe and I'm a first year student at the University of Cambridge. Just to let you guys know, this is a series of videos about university admissions both to Cambridge, Oxbridge and just university admissions more generally. So please subscribe to make sure that you see all of them. This is the first one and today we are going to be discussing Cambridge Colleges because there are many. And I had to do a lot of research for this video and I go to the university. So... Okay, so I've got all my information up on a laptop because Believe it or not, despite going to Cambridge University, I actually have a very terrible memory and I can't remember anything that I researched, so hopefully I'll be able to once it's written down. Okay, so I'm going to do this video as if you are somebody who is looking to apply to Cambridge University. You have found out about the college system and you don't know which college to pick. But to explain first, for those of you who don't know what I mean by Cambridge Colleges, the University of Cambridge is one of a few collegiate universities in the UK. So Oxford, Durham, there are a few others, but there aren't very many. And to explain the collegiate system, basically, as a student, you are a student of the wider university as a whole. So I'm a student of the University of Cambridge, but I'm also a member of Magdalen College Cambridge. This is the place where I receive my offer. I this is the place where I live, I eat there, I met all of my friends through Freshers Week at Magdalen and even though the university does have students from lots of different colleges that all mingle, this is kind of your, your centre and your base for your time during university. You do manage to meet people from other colleges and go to other colleges but a lot of the time it means that you have people and a space to kind of feel safe and to come back to after you've gone to lectures and you've had all of your classes. So I've narrowed it down to eight different things that you can consider if you were choosing a Cambridge College and if you're not applying then it might just show the difference between the colleges which is quite interesting I think. Okay so the first thing to consider are the restrictions on who can apply to that college. And you may not have known this, but some colleges are for women only and some colleges are for postgraduates and mature students only. I've done a lot of research, she says, and then realises she hasn't written down which colleges are for mature students and postgraduates. Well done. So Lucy Cavendish, Murray Edwards and Newnham are all colleges that only admit women. Reading from Wikipedia now. Um, Lucy Cavendish only admits women mature students or postgraduates, Clare Hall and Darwin only admit postgrads, Hughes Hall, St Edmunds and Wolfson only admit mature students or postgraduates. So there may be some people who would like to go to a girls only college, this personally wouldn't have been my preference but lately I have thought that maybe I would have been better off ditching the boys, you know. It should also be noted that postgraduate colleges um, are only for people who only want to share a living space with other postgraduates. Most of the other Cambridge colleges accept undergraduates and postgrads. So I think one of the most important things that I considered before I applied was how big the college was and you would probably be surprised to hear how much this varies. For undergraduate the biggest college is Trinity College which has at any given time around um, 600 undergraduates and the smallest is Peter House which only admits about 75 undergraduates per year. Um, Magdalen is quite a small college, we have around 150 people I think in our year group um, but I originally applied to a college which was a little bit bigger, Pembroke. Um, why I didn't end up going there I will get back to later in the video so hold on for that. I originally wanted to apply to a bigger college because I liked the idea of being kind of anonymous in a big group of people but a small college is definitely different to that. Something that's great about it is that everybody knows each other so if you have a problem I don't think you're ever short of people to turn to. Um, people in general are willing to help, are quite friendly and 
you definitely feel that sense of community because it's such a small group of people but the slight downside is I think that because everybody knows each other everybody also knows each other's business and that can sometimes be a little bit awkward because people do gossip and I have found out gossip about people that I didn't really want to know honestly so I hate to kind of think of that being people talking about me um, which I don't think you get at a big college because you wouldn't be able to know the names or faces of most of the people in your year group whereas at Maudlin you definitely know everybody. <laughs> Okay, so number three is location, which can vary quite a lot. Um, Cambridge University is based around quite close to the city centre in terms of um, where the lecture halls are, where the two different sites are, depending on whether you study sciences or humanities. Um, but there are sites that are slightly further away and all of the colleges are scattered throughout the centre of Cambridge and slightly further out. This is something you definitely want to consider because if you're in the centre you'll be quite near things like shops, restaurants and supermarkets um, but you may want to be closer to your lecture site so you don't have to get a bike. If you are in either Homerton or Girton College then you're probably going to have to get the bus or ride a bike because um, I'm pretty sure there aren't actually buses from Girton and it is very far away compared to the other colleges. Homerton does have a bus, but most students do actually cycle to lectures, which means, unlike me, you would have to be able to ride a bike. Colleges like Emma and Downing are considered quite central, next to the shops, but colleges like Newnham, for example, are right next to the Sidwick site, which is where all the humanities student go students go, so you could quite literally roll out of bed five minutes before your lecture and make it to your 9am, which I've heard is quite good. <laughs> Now we move on to number three, which is considering how oversubscribed or undersubscribed college is. So I said that I originally applied to Pembroke, which is slightly oversubscribed, and as a result, I got pooled to a different college. So the college pooling system works in the winter and the summer, and it is when they want a student but can't fit them in a particular college, and therefore you get put in a different college. That's all it is, it isn't kind of a mark on your academic record, it doesn't matter, you still become a student of the university, but because some colleges are more well known, so you'll probably know Trinity, King's, St John's, a lot of people apply to those, and because some others are undersubscribed, then they need more students. St Pembroke is a medium sized central college, and I mean, I probably applied there because that's where Tom Hiddleston went, let's be honest. Um, probably wasn't the best thing to base your Cambridge College choice off but you know I didn't know where to apply to and I got put in Maudlin. And yeah you learn to love whatever college you're at really. Um, every college has upsides and downsides but I do think that you become accustomed to where you live and you become quite proud of whatever college you're at. I mean, I've literally got a Maudlin coaster sitting on my desk, just my cup, so. Okay, so number four. Wait, is it number four? No, we're up to number five. Number five is how academic is the college and does the academic style of the college fit your subject? So most colleges do have uh, supervisors for every subject and for things like supervisions and small group teaching you can be sent to another college. So this term I have a really really great Shakespeare supervisor but he wasn't at Maudlin so I would have had to walk to a different college to have supervisions with him. But you may want to look at who the fellows are, who the professors are in uh, the college that you're applying for. If there's something really specific you want to study, you may want to contact someone and ask if there is a college in particular that you should apply to. Um, and maybe also consider where on the Tompkins table, which is the academic ranking for all the colleges, your college would sit. Um, so despite popular belief, and I'm pretty sure when I googled it, it came up with the wrong college. Uh, Trinity isn't actually at the top of the Tompkins table currently. 
Um, the most academic college last year was Christ's College. And you may think that would be brilliant because you want to go to the most academic environment, but it also means it would probably be one of the most stressful environments. And you may not want that. I know a lot of people who worked so, so hard to get into Cambridge that now that they're there, they really do not want the stress and they want to look after their mental health, which is honestly quite fair. Um, therefore, you might want to consider um, a college that's kind of in the middle, like Maudlin. <laughs> so, number six, I've grouped under the heading of money. One thing I'd like to say just before I start, though, is I would like to talk about how you afford going to Cambridge and the money you need to go to university in a different video, but if you are at all worried about money, then please do not let this stop you from applying to university, especially top universities like Oxford and Cambridge, because these universities have measures in place, no matter what background you're from, and I'm definitely not someone who comes from a really privileged, rich background. I am actually from a working class background, and I'm still there. I still manage to afford everything, and that is because of the measures that the university have in place. But there is some difference between colleges on this front, so that's what I want to talk about today. So besides your student loan and any bursaries you may receive from the university itself, you can receive extra grants and bursaries and scholarships from the college itself. These will be either academic based or they will be based on your household income and they do vary a lot depending on which, you, which college you go to. This isn't something I considered too much, but when I actually got into Magdalen, I found out there was a different set of bursaries than those that were at Pe Pembroke when I originally applied, and it actually worked out for the better for me. It is just something worth looking into if you are worried about money specifically. The second part to this would be about accommodation. So accommodation prices can vary a lot, and I have looked at the average accommodation prices and Newnham ranks at top which is quite a bit above average and Homerton at the bottom with accommodation generally below average. Between the different colleges there is usually a range of accommodation, some cheaper, some more expensive depending on whether you have an ensuite, how many people share a bathroom, whether it's a new building, whether it's an old building, whether you have um, a lot of character, whether you have low ceilings because the building was made in the medieval times, but it may be something that you want to look at. You may have specific medical requirements for accommodation that mean that you have to choose certain accommodation, or you may just have some accommodation preferences. I know I had certain standards before I applied to university, and if you've seen my room tour video, you'll know that I didn't get any of the things that I wanted. <laughs> and the third part to this bit is about travel grants. So I actually applied for a travel grant to go abroad this summer because I wanted to study for a month in a different country, which of course is impossible at the moment and the application eventually were cancelled. Um, but what I liked is that Cambridge colleges do have these kind of systems in place, but some colleges have more comprehensive systems than others. In general, if you apply to a richer college, they have more grants to one side for um, studying abroad and this also covers things like um, internships and research. There are some grants available from the university as a whole but there are different ones and there are definitely more comprehensive grants that are available per college. Um, however again this does vary so you may want to research the college before you apply. <laughs> okay so number seven is <laughs> Something that may seem insignificant, but is it really insignificant? What the college looks like. So the oldest college is Peterhouse, um, but people will probably be more familiar with um, colleges like Trinity, Kings and Johns. Um, these colleges probably have the most photographed architecture. I'm not going to try and guess which style of architecture it is because one of my best friends is a history of art student and she will get very irritated with me if I get it wrong. Um, but there are some modern colleges as well. Some of them don't look as aesthetic but I've heard that they have a really nice community anyway. But 
You may want to consider this before you apply. And the last one, number eight, is a little bit of a joke, but you may also want to consider what the students think. So the first one would be, what merch can you get? Um, as I said, I've got a coaster here, but this is definitely not um, all of the merchandise or stash as we call it that you can get for Maudlin. Um, my friend has Maudlin gin, a Maudlin teddy bear. I have um, a Maudlin jumper and a coffee cup. My friends also have puffer jackets with a Maudlin logo on, which we all wear to kind of show which college we go to. As I said, you do become proud of whatever college you're at, um, but I am very jealous of the people at Downing who turn up to English lectures with cool water bottles that are black matte with the Downing logo down the side in gold. We don't have those. <laughs> you should also look on things like Camfest, which is the confessions page for Cambridge. Please ignore some of the things on there because not all of the students think like that and some of the comments are incredibly inappropriate, but they do um, joke about Cambridge colleges as different things and these give you a good idea of what stereotypes are of the different colleges which are not always right but sometimes do give a good idea of what the college is like and what the community of people there are like. Visit the TAB website which has um, their own list of uh, Cambridge colleges and all of the pros and cons for each one and something I used was the alternative prospectus. If you google um, whatever college, alternative perspectives, it will come up online and these have student viewpoints on, praise the college for the things that are really true about student life rather than just things that the university would want on the perspectives. Thank you for watching this video, again it is part of a series on university admissions so please subscribe to make sure that you see all of them. I think next week I'm doing a video on uh, personal statements which will apply to any university, not just Oxford and Cambridge or just Cambridge specifically. I'd like you to check out the university Q&A video I did um, a couple of weeks ago because um, a lot of you who watch my channel aren't subscribed, then not many people saw it at all which is really quite sad because I think it's actually my most helpful video on this channel. Um, especially if you're applying to university or if you just really want to know what university life is like. I think I was very truthful in that video so please go and check it out and leave a like on this video. If you have any questions whatsoever please put them down in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer any questions you have and I'll see you next week. Bye!